Power Asia to the Philippines on three. One, two, three. Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, Bonnie Gore, Jason Outlaw, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Alfonso. Tonight's guest, from Adventure Combat Ops, Travis Krauss. A man who's down on his luck, helpless romantic Patrick. Performance by comedian Stephen Briggs. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's currently fundraising for the presidential hopeful D's Nuts, Mr. Jason Outlaw! DJ Lenny go. Alfonso, huh? Let's hear it for him. Yeah. Is this thing on? Oh, hey, there it is. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to the Downtown Podcast. I am Bonnie Gore. Just joking. <laughs> Just joking. I wish she got it because that's Bonnie's friend. Good. Solid. All right. Cool. All right. Good stuff. Well, once again, uh, how are you doing, Lenny? You doing all right? Today is a good day. It is a Today good day. I'm not going to use the AK joke because no one got it the last two times, so whatever. All right. Cool. Good stuff. Moving on. All right. So here's what's happening in the news. Target wants to make you a cocktail while you're shopping. That's right, Target stores are considering allowing its customers to drink alcoholic beverages while they shop. Yes, when Walmart was asked, they said, hey, they're not worried. People get drunk before they go shopping at Walmart. <laughs> well, Walmart says, hey, when you have people shooting meth in your aisles, you can call us. <laughs> they do. Good thing. Firefighters have saved a man that was having a heart attack, and then they came back and finished mowing his lawn. The man's wife said, ooh, mow my lawn next. Oh. Did you guys get that? No? <laughs> Makes sense. Boy, Makes sense. That, that went over like a fart in a spacesuit, didn't it? That's all right. Good stuff. All right. Solid. All right. Um, there's a prisoner known as the Booty Warrior, who is, uh, who is known as the Booty Warrior for how many men he raped. The booty, While he was booty in prison, warrior. that's right. And he's actually scheduled to be released. That's right. So uh, actually, we really do need to hide our kids, hide our wives, and definitely hide your husbands. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the booty warrior, he actually once said that he likes it when guys come into prison and their pants are sagging because it's easy access. In other news, gangsters everywhere are now wearing mom jeans. <laughs> Kentucky clerk Kim Davis has been jailed for contempt of court when she refused to issue same-sex marriage licenses. Licenses? License. That's right. Uh, Kim Davis has been married four times and had children with different men. And she says gays are ruining the sanctity of marriage. <laughs> When asked in court, she actually said she firmly believes that marriage should be between one man and one woman, and another man, and another man, and another man. <laughs> North Korea <laughs> has landed its first man on Saturn. That's right, according to reports that they released just to their country, that they have uh, sent a man to Saturn and that he will be back shortly. That's right, this is about as true as Kim Jong-un's diet plan. <laughs> how, do you t how do you lie to a whole country and they don't get I don't know I don't know do we even have a man on the moon who knows who knows uh, Tori Spelling is suing popular restaurant Benihana after being burned by one of their grills Benihana said hey we're not worried because the temperature of our grills do not burn plastic <laughs> that's right I'm getting a lot of oohs and ahs tonight. This is, all right, it's, it's a good time. Those, yeah. All right, bam, bam, I'm feeling it. All right, oohs, ahs, all right. Um, actually, uh, we went to Adventure Combat Ops. Anyone, everyone know what that is? It's, it's yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a zombie apocalypse adventure. So basically you get guns and you go out and you shoot uh, all these cool zombies. So uh, if you look over there at the screen, we have some photos that we had uh, taken while we were at this, uh, this adventure. And uh, we've got some captions that go along with them. So it's the first picture up, we got it. Good. Uh, so this actually is a picture of a Utah jazz player that killed himself because they suck. 
<laughs> this next picture is uh, Akil actually thinking he's going to survive. <laughs> AKA the black guy always dies first. <laughs> this next picture is of me, that's right. That's my look after seeing a, uh, after watching a orgy for 45 minutes of zombies. <laughs> I left a broken man. <laughs> Zombie orgy, hey, huh? Yeah, zombies aren't always after you, man. They gotta get some too, it's all right, it's cool. Um, the next one is Donovan saying, Sarge, they have no prostate cancer. That's right, no gun needed, I found my thumb. <laughs> This next one is Dylan thinking, do I want to be standing next to the black guy? <laughs> uh, this next one is one of my favorites. This is Frankie giving props to his favorite artist, R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> that guy liked that one. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> um, and this next one, if you notice, this is our seasoned zombie slayer, Julia, who uh, obviously knew that zombies always, always veer to the left. Yeah. If you look at her eye, she's got this one closed, this one open. <laughs> awesome. All right, cool. <laughs> and uh, also, in a time of war, Frankie has found love. Look at that picture. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to Kentucky to get married. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> um, at the end of the night, we all survived because Bonnie killed them all with kindness. Look at that <laughs> smile. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got an amazing show coming your way. Once again, give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso! That was a great monologue, and now we are ready to take you down the roller coaster because our next guest grew up in Mexico. And four years ago, he fell in love with a woman from the US who would come out to Mexico to visit her family. And they fell in love, it was all on the beach, that whole thing, like you've seen. And um, a few weeks ago, he started a 5,000 kilometer journey to come to Utah to meet her. Uh, and it, when he got to Colorado, Unfortunately, she said that she could not spend his birthday with him and that he probably shouldn't come visit her. No. She said, she said that another guy gave her a ticket to go on a party bus to a concert. <laughs> so in a strange series of events, he ended up hooking up with somebody and making it all the way here to the podcast. So please put your hands together for Patrick Rodrigo Raringo Raringo Rio. <laughs> Seat. All right, we're gonna try not to tear up during this whole thing, but uh, yeah. So, so you you lived in Mexico. This what, what can you describe this woman that you met that would come out for the summers? Well, she is an amazing. Yeah, no names. We're just metaphors. <laughs> metaphors. <laughs> well, she cracks me up. She's an amazing woman. Sweet. Yeah. Ever since Funny. I met her, like a beautiful smile. Yeah. Amazing eyes. Everything. You know, just the whole romantic thing. Okay. And you She's said smart. For four years, every summer you'd come out, and you guys had a great relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Every time we would hang out, it was just beautiful. You know, and that's and I promised her that one day I would come and visit her, but since and I you're was. You're a man that keeps your promises. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Sorry. You got it. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so you said I'm going to keep this promise and come see you in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah, and I wanted to make it earlier, but um, since I had other projects, I was going to college, and then after college, I started a company with a friend of mine in uh, Playa del Carmen. Uh, I wasn't able to come until now that I'm free. And, uh, well, I started this journey. Uh, it was six weeks ago when, I told, when she told me that she wanted me to come visit her while she was in Spain. Oh, she instigated it. Yeah. Okay, okay. When the moon hits your eye like oh, yeah, a yeah, yeah, pizza yeah, yeah. pie, that's uh, morning. I know I said I wanted to up, Joe. But. And, and so a week later, I met this friend uh, that uh, she, he was traveling. Uh, he was going to make a road trip uh, all the way to Colorado. And so I joined him. And we started this amazing journey. It took us a week to get to, all the way to Colorado from Playa del Carmen. And uh, throughout the, the way, excuse me? Then the call. The call? Like, 
from her? Oh, not yet. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Soon, Nicole. Yeah, soon, pretty soon. <laughs> Actually, a message, which oh, can't be revealed. Text or voice? Text uh, message or voice message? Text. Text. Yeah, terrible. Terrible way. Yeah, I know, Ooh. I know. Yeah, yeah. Do we have her on the phone? <laughs> Hello? That, that would have been good. <laughs> okay, where's our content team on that one? <laughs> She's right here on the screen now. She's oh, like, yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay, so tell me about this, this text. Uh, well, basically, she told me that she was in another relationship uh, that he, she, just, he, she had just started. Uh, also, that not only in the relationship, but with other open relationships. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, right. I don't know. It was, it was weird. And it made me realize that I couldn't be with a woman like that. Yeah. No. So here you are stuck in Colorado. You made it 4,000 kilometers. And it has been an amazing journey. Yeah. I went hiking. I went... Well, okay, so you made the best of it. Yeah, like it has been amazing. Yeah. Now, what kind of concert was it? <laughs> uh, well, she said it was like country. So I'm like imagining yeah. something like Hannah Montana or something like that. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, uh. And then... Yeah, and the, okay, and the party bus. It was what do you know about the party bus? Like, what tempted her away from that? Well, like, well I have no idea. fully stocked party well, bus. Well, she, she told me that on the day of the birthday, with, of my birthday, uh, that was the day I'm, I was going to get there, uh, she told me that she had already booked, like, this guy that she's dating, she had already booked a bus for her to go on this, to this concert. To this and, concert, yeah. and, and, and the bus is a party bus, so, like, all the friends, and, right, and right. that I wasn't invited. So I was like, all right, well, Okay, so how did you spend your birthday? How did I spend my birthday? Yeah, like what were you doing on your birthday? Well, I was here at the podcast last week. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like same, as the, same birthday as Akio, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Akio. Yeah, so we can pretend that's for both of you. Yeah. Yeah, it was, time. Yeah. it was uh, an amazing birthday, really. I met you, man. Okay. Yeah, were you heartbroken? Uh, tell me about How did you feel? For, for that day, I was. I was for so that you're day. You are just in the back of the audience, like... Nah, no, okay. really, no. Nah, I was having. Oh, yeah, I, got it. I mean, it still saddens me, you know, like to think what she did. But what can I do, you know? Yeah. I'm just, hey, I'm just gonna enjoy life, give li uh, life a smile, so it can, it can smile back to me, and just oh, have the best of it, you know? Nice. Make the best of nice. it. Yeah, that's All right, good. yeah, that's how it should be. All right. So yeah, now, um, letting me bring it down. Yeah, so, but you, you met one of the podcast volunteers, Vanessa. You got to know her. Yeah. She brought you out here, and she's actually got a poem she'd like to read to you. So this is going to talk about your friendship. So, Akil, can we grab the microphone? Yes. Yeah, and we have the, uh, oh, she's got it? Okay. Okay, so there's Hi. Vanessa. Okay, so go ahead. You can take the seat now. All right, I will. And just to clarify, Patrick is not my lover. He is my good friend. Yeah. <laughs> and I met him while I was hiking through Colorado this summer. Yes. And I, it just by a, turn of events, I met him at my friend's house and I said, come back to Vegas with me. Yeah. So yeah. I wrote you this poem because I love you so Thank much. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay. You told me your name, you told me they call you spaghetti and walk with a monkey carved of jade stone. I'm telling you I'm here to get you ready to show you true love is not alone. It's not something you can borrow, nor is it jealousy. It's something you will find through sorrow. How else would it know it to be? I've admired you from the start, feeling your soul from behind that blue stare. I know that she broke your heart, but she did not cut off that hair. No. My admiration goes much deeper than any physical domain. How could she not know you were a keeper? Was she blind or totally insane? Oh, ooh, ooh. oh second page. Because your smile is contagious, you bring a spark wherever you go. I imagine you've always been courageous, something you learned a long time ago. For you have done this before, and you know you will love again. Your beauty comes from your core. You are something that has always been. I'm sorry that she hurt you, and I'm sorry that you're in pain, but I'm not sorry that I met you. One person's loss can be another's gain. <laughs> because that's how a charge is created. It's a balance of divinity, a Felix Koopa reincarnated. I gift you this part of me. Perhaps we've met in the past and made mountains and crystals our own. It'd be an illusion to think that time does not last. Este viaje siempre estaré bien chingón. Give it 
it up for Patrick and Vanessa, everybody. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, man. You're worth dating. You're worth dating. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This segment is brought to you by Iron Yard. Iron Yard offers a variety of courses designed to help people reach their learning and career goals. From those of you looking to dip your toes into the world of software, to those who want to dive in deep and find a fulfilling job, there's a place for you at Iron Yard. Our next guest is a former member of Airborne Rangers and Delta Force, and after his career in combat, he started designing and executing military tactical training exercises and programs all around the country. He has now opened up a facility here in Las Vegas that regular civilians, like myself, can go through and save the world from zombies. Help me welcome the founder of this surprisingly realistic zombie apocalypse simulator, Adventure Combat Ops, Travis Krauss. Hey. hey, yes. You came with some security here, right? Evidently I did. Have yeah. a seat. Yeah, thank you much. I'm assuming she doesn't need one. She's on guard there. Let me tell you something. That uh, don't let the pink hair fool you. She can throw down. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, <laughs> and I do know. I do know this. We had the pleasure of meeting um, a few of the people that, that, what Jack says, what is their title? Exactly. Operative team leaders. Operative team leaders. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had the pleasure of coming on to this tactical training <coughs> site and learning, our whole team did. And it was a great team building experience. Tell us why you went from teaching military tactical training to doing a more civilian um, based training facility? Yeah, good, good question. I, I also understand real quickly though, Bonnie, that mo most of you actually made it out of that too, oh, right? I'm barely. I mean, yeah, thanks still, to me. So a couple unaccounted for, but we're supposed <laughs> right. to be getting answers on that. Right, okay, so, right. Yeah, so w with our other work, we do a, do a lot of work with uh, with special ops out of the military side of the house and State Department side of the house, setting up these large scale uh, high kinetic, high robust, high op tempo, um, realistic training exercises. And so, in, you know, in doing that, it's obviously very high demanding, um, you know, a little dangerous sometimes, a lot of fun. But nonetheless, there's, you know, there's some, there are, uh, is a little bit of drama that goes with doing business with the right. government. And I have never been in actual combat. However, I feel that that was very realistic, just from going in the houses. I mean, the houses were realistic. We had real furniture. We had to find intel. Uh, how realistic is that compared to actual combat that you've experienced? You guys were all part of the show as part of a, a performance, mm -hmm. but it's all replicated after exactly what, what we do in combat. Right, right. And just to give the audience an idea, we have pellet guns, They wa we have helmets, they walk us through with our teams on a very, very detailed tactical mission. We learn, um, you know, uh, formations, and then we go into what is built like a, a desolate city, and we're trying to clear it of zombies, which are actually jumping out and attacking us, and terrorists. So it was very, very realistic. I was afraid that I would be afraid, but I was so busy fighting and trying to think about the tactics that you taught us during training that I didn't have time to be scared. But do you guys get people that are really freaked out? We've, we've had one that uh, she's a little out of her element, I'll just put it that way, but uh, she had to kind of get drawn back down a little bit, a little bit of this. Yes. You know, reminded, hey, we're just playing, but she came back down. Is it Jillian? I heard her screaming from the other side. <laughs> But bless her heart, she did the whole thing and she kicked in a door screaming her head off the whole damn time. But yeah. she did it. She did it. Yes, she did. <laughs> she did. She did. And I felt like G.I. Jane. Like I felt like a real live G.I. Jane. I heard you looked like G.I. Jane. I was like screaming. I was like, suck my, you know, <laughs> like on the movie. And I think it really scared is Here's this show some... officially rated? Uh, I think yeah, it's rated I was, yeah, I was going to say it, but we're yeah, on cable TV okay. or else. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I was saying it there, and I scared <laughs> the zombies. <laughs> oh, we got to bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It was fun. But on a more serious note, you guys do a lot of great team training for uh, corporations. It's built off of this military training. Why is it important for businesses, whether it's a huge corporation <laughs> or a small business or a program like 
like ours. We found great, great training and teamwork. We learned a lot about each other, mm -hmm. what people are made mm -hmm. of, what our weaknesses and our strengths are. Um, how does that help companies? It's interesting because we've already done a number of corporate events. With a, uh, we actually got a bunch more coming up just in this next week, and and a couple of things that we really test that people don't understand. You don't realize how effective or ineffective your communication skills are until you're out of your comfort zone. Evidently, you guys need to come back in for retraining. Oh my goodness. Yep, yep, well done. Thank you, thank you. I do believe I may have tinkled just a little bit, but uh, well done, Jack. Do these things follow you everywhere you go? I mean, come on, if you're out to dinner, I'm you have to bring, no wonder you have to bring Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, I'm I was wondering what that was about, but now I understand. Now we know. Now we know. <laughs> Always got to keep your head on the stroll. Hey, the I apocalypse mean, is real. <laughs> yes. The apocalypse is real. You got to be ready for it. That scared me, but so, so to, so finish, to finish <laughs> answering your question, yes. nice, nicely done, Jack. Appreciate it. <laughs> the uh, finish answer your question. So people don't really understand how effective or ineffective, usually in most cases, their communication skills are until they're they're in a high op tempo and foreign environment. And the second thing too is you really want to test somebody's leadership ability. Put them in a high stress environment that is foreign to them. Right, and right. So yeah, we, we uh, it's great because we have companies come in, we take all the management and we'll put them in assistant team leader positions and then their worker bees, you know, underneath them, their executives or associate, or I'm sorry, their associates or whatever the case would be. And we just let them go to town and you could just see, you know, the teams looking up at the assistant team leader just smiling saying, yeah, show me what They've you're doing. They've got it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you guys get some pretty big celebrities coming through there now. I mean, is it, it, how is that? How, do you have any fun stories about some fun celebrities coming through? You guys have had UFC fighters, some yep. professional football players. Do you have anything that, yeah, we, did they step up to the plate? It, it, they did, I won't say who it was. We actually had a couple really big guys, won't say where they came from, but uh, one of our team leaders had to chase them down the street to bring them back as zombies were chasing them away. <laughs> They'd forgotten that they had guns. But. Oh, wow. And these are professional athletes that... They're professional athletes. They were having fun, but let's just say they were definitely having fun in the realm of being scared. See, Jill, Jill is uh, tougher than a professional athlete. She, she stuck it out. No. She did. She did. Well, and as far as meltdowns and being overwhelmed is concerned, how do you keep your team together and teach them the technical... Oh, no! I can't. Jill's behind the scenes right now. Oh, she is dying. the A team. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, she is dying right now. She's... These zombies are no joke. And if they bite you, I don't know if you've heard this, but you really die. So don't. <laughs> but um, yeah, how do you keep your, what tactics do you use with your team? A lot of them are ex-military, right? Mm -hmm. And so they, it's kind of embedded in their, in, in their fabric. But what do you guys do as a team to help, you know, guide other teams through this? Uh, first off, we try to understand, you know, for example, the company's coming through, we try to understand what their core values are, you know, what, what their foundational building blocks are, and we incorporate that into the scenario. Uh, you know, it's just regular people, you know, coming through with the open, open shows every day, then, you know, something like that. We're, we're just looking to have fun with them. Not right. a lot of takeaways from that, just, just a lot of good times. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Because I, everybody worked as a team, and they had a lot of the core values that we do, I feel like, you know, they like to joke around, give each other a hard time, but got the job done at the end of the day. And I was proud to be a part of it. And anybody here in Las Vegas, or if you're visiting Las Vegas, I highly recommend you go. If you have any sort of team building activity, I mean, we really, really had a blast. Yeah, so we, we appreciate you having us. Um, I don't know, any other fun stories about any of your team members? Have, they, have any of them had we any to, weird We try to keep We try to keep the dirt, dirt in house. Oh. But, uh, there, I, there's definitely stuff that goes on behind the scenes, a lot of, lot of screwing off that people don't see about, you know, just so we can keep everything fun and spicy. We, we typically like to make fun of people. I can tell you real quickly, one time, uh, I, I was actually out helping with the show, because it is, it's a performance, it's a show. Right, it is. For, you know, instead of watching the show like every place else in Vegas, here you are the show. Right. And I had, uh, I had this, one, this one guy in a corporate event uh, and he was just way too ambitious, and I'd tell him to, hey, go stand right there and pull security, and he'd take off out the door and start running down the street, and I'd have to go chase him, drag him back in, and I told him, you know, of course, we're all on roll, I told him, you're grounded, and I put this woman, I said, hey, you stand here and watch him, if you move, shoot him, and she, her face just lit up, and she said, oh, I will, well, I'll come to find out later, that was his wife. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. So did she shoot him? 
Uh, there, let's just say that when I went to the other room, I heard a lot of noise. <laughs> right. Yeah, a lot of noise, but he was still erect when I, uh, that wasn't right. He was still standing when I came back into Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's officially going to be required B-rated now. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we really appreciate you coming on. I would love to do it again. I've had a blast. I'm recommending it to everybody I know, especially corporations or groups and teams, because it's very, very adventurous. And I appreciate we, that. Thank and, you. And we liked it. Um, so again, how can people find you? If they're a corporation they want to get on, mm -hmm. um, if individuals can go too, is right? Well, typically that's what it is. We're open to the public. People, it's a, it's a show. People come in, you know, individually, they come in, the families come in, couples, pairs. Most of this is geared towards the tourism on the strip, people okay. coming in to visit. And then, you know, we have a lot of companies booking us out uh, ahead of time as well, or booking us on the days off when we're, you know, we only do closed events. But uh, yeah, this is not, this is designed for uh, you know the standard tourists to come in and have ab absolute blast. So they can find us one of two ways. Obviously, first is the the website uh, adventurecombatops.com, okay. and then also the phone number eight four four end near. End near. End because the end is near. near. People are like really obsessed with this zombie thing. Evidently, they are. Yeah, yeah. I don't really get it. I'll be honest with you, but we're making you know we're having fun with it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again for coming on and. Don't forget, if you do get a chance to go, get on Yelp, rate them. I guarantee you will give them five stars because yeah. everybody was great. Yeah, the reviews speak for themselves. We've got perfect five stars across the board from everybody who's come through. So. Perfect. All right. Well, stay tuned because up next we have comedian Stephen Briggs. <laughs> Our next performer, comedian Stephen Briggs. All right, yes. Yes, I'm excited to be here. Guys, I'll tell you something uh, crazy about myself. My mom is uh, Puerto Rican, which blows everyone's mind. I know why. I know, it's weird. Especially when she introduces me to one of her friends. She'll be like, oh, this is my son. And they're like, oh, how did this happen? How did this happen? I'm like, well, you know how the Coca-Cola company makes Coca-Cola? Well, they also make Sprite. <laughs> That's how that happened right there. Even when I had friends over, it was weird. I remember I had a friend over playing video games and my mom comes in, she's like, Dennis Ombre? And the kid goes, wow, you've got a maid. I know, that was the first time I saw my mom beat someone else's kid. <laughs> Have you guys laughed at that joke? Because I don't think there's a lot of freedom of speech in this country anymore. I feel like we get in trouble for a lot of things we do and say. In fact, the only place I think freedom of speech still thrives is in uh, rap music. And, that's because there's a beat behind it. Because if there was no beat and a rapper jumped out at you and started going acapella, he would be a homeless man. <laughs> just jump, hey, what up, big booty girl? Come on, let me just beat up 22 rips. Think this happy? Come on, give me some more. You're like, oh my God, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but you put a beat behind that same crazy, it's like, big booty bounce, big booty bounce, psh, psh, big booty bounce, big booty bounce, psh, psh, big booty bounce, big booty bounce, psh, psh, Beep, booty bounce, beep. Now just back it up, 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 back it up. Now tap dance, girl. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. And girls defend these rappers too. They're like, oh, he's so sexy. He is so cool. I'm like, he is disrespecting you. <laughs> like, honestly, I think rappers are hypnotists because no matter what they say, girls do it. They're like, drop it low. They're like, I'm dropping it low. <laughs> They're like, throw it to the window. They're like, where's the window? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you go to a nightclub tonight, and you see these women dance now, it just looks like a bunch of demons possessed. And they're just like, eh, eh, you like that? You like that? You like that? <laughs> I do not like that. I don't like, it just moves too fast for me, okay? Because I got my left hand on her hip, my right hand's in the air. I'm like, come on, eight seconds. Just give me eight seconds. I just need eight seconds. Oh, wow. And then they start dropping it low. They're like, yeah, you think that's sexy? I'm like, this is not sexy to me, okay? This just reminds me of you peeing on the side of the road. <laughs> it's hard to find, like, because my parents want me to get married, but it's just hard to find, like, a, a, like a partner at that kind of place, you know? And it's weird that my parents want me to get married because they're divorced. Yeah, but they still live in the same house, but they sleep in different bedrooms. I know, right? 
I thought this was normal growing up until I went to my friend Tommy's house. I realized his parents slept in the same bed. So I run home to my mom and I'm like, Mom, why do Tommy's parents sleep in the same bed? And she goes, ah, sweetie, I didn't want to tell you this, but Tommy's parents are poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, sweetie. And when your dad and I get even more money, we're going to get separate houses. <laughs> I was like, double Christmases, yeah. <laughs> what? I, we never had double Christmases. Our Christmases sucked, in fact. I remember one Christmas, I asked my dad for a bike. And he, he wakes me up on Christmas. He goes, go downstairs, see what I got you. So I run downstairs, <laughs> open the door. And there's this purple bike. And on the frame, it read princess. <laughs> I know. I was like, Dad, this is a girl's bike. I start crying. He's like, oh, you're always complaining. He goes back inside, comes back out with a knife, and then scrapes off two S's, so now it says Prince. <laughs> I liked uh, the zombie stuff earlier. That was amazing. Uh, I, I watch, yeah, right? I watch a, a ton of zombie shows, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the, the new one they have, they did the spinoff of The Walking Dead, and my girlfriend and I are watching it, and she goes, this is so unrealistic. And I go, I know, it's zombies. She goes, no, that girl, that bag she's wearing, it's a thousand dollar bag. She can't afford that. Her parents are teachers. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know what I always see? I always notice that the zombies, their vocal cords are always like, Rawr! No, not everybody has vocal cords like that, okay? At least one zombie would just be like, Ugh. Uh, ooh, I could just eat you up. Mm. Thank you guys very much. I'm Steven Briggs. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our live studio audience and all of you at home. We'd also like to thank Halloween March, Vegas' costume headquarters for supplying us with a zombie style action tonight. Check them out at HalloweenMart.com. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night at 9 p.m. right here at the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube for exclusive online-only content. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, MySpace at Downtown Podcast and at DJ Lenny Alfonso. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Peace, love, and be kind to one another. See you next week. Woo!